Hey, it's John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. And we have something that I brewed a year ago, right wow. here in front of us. And this is the first time, not only is Mike gonna taste it, but me too. Because it's been sitting in my basement since December of 2020. This is an Imperial Stout with a little something extra in it. Okay. We named this Always Darkest Before the Dawn Imperial Stout. Um, I guess I was, you know, thinking about the pandemic or something like that and uh, not taking into consideration, you know, variants and things like that. Um, so again, brewed December 2020. The boil size was seven U.S. gallons. Batch size in the uh, fermenter was five gallons. Um, are you ready? Because this gra grain bill is Get a little long. Out. I know, seriously. Well, I'm sure I'll put it on the, the old blog. Um, total weight was uh, 20, a little bit over 24 pounds, a little less than 11 kilograms. And here we are. 7.5 pounds of Great Western Pale Malt. That's 3.4 kilograms. That's 31% of the grain bill. 6.5 pounds of Stone Path Northeast Gold Pale Malt. They're a local uh, to us maltster. That's uh, 2.9 kilograms or 27% of the grain bill. Five pounds of raw pale ale malt. Tw that's 2.3 kilograms or 21% of the grain bill. So that's kind of the, um, and, will, and this is actually a um, important delineation right now because these are all the base malts and I'll talk about it when I get to the mash schedule. Exciting. All right, so then I put in two pounds of flake barley. That's 0.9 kilograms or 8%. Uh, 0 0.5 or half pound of roasted barley, uh, that's 226 kilograms or 2%. Good note on that, I'll, 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 I'll talk about that as well. And then we get into like some wackiness, it's basically clean out the fridge time. Uh, so <laughs> sorry, 0 0.625 pounds of caramel, 120 love malt, that's, that's 5 eighths of a pound. Uh, 283 grams for 3%, uh, 0.3125 pounds of caramel 60 malt, that's 5 sixteenths of a pound, or uh, 142 grams for 1% uh, of the grain bill. Half pound of caramel 40, that's uh, 226 grams, 2%. Half a uh, pound of chocolate malt, that's, that was a 350 love, um, or uh, 226 grams, and again, 2%. Half pound of Carahel malt, I'm really getting into the things I had left over. That's uh, again, 226 grams or 2% of the grain bill. And lastly, I had a little packet of uh, Bark Munich malt. I had a quarter pound of that, 113 grams for 1% of the grain bill. So again, pretty big, lots of stuff. Uh, for hops, we went with um, a mixture of Cascade and Centennial to start off the beginning of the boil. So it was 1.5 ounces or 43 grams of Cascade hops for 90 minutes. It was a 90 minute boil, I just put it all in in the beginning. Uh, that was at 6.1 alpha acids uh, for a 9.15 alpha acid unit. And then uh, the Centennial hops, that was another uh, ounce and a half or 43 grams for 90 minutes as well. That was 9.5 alpha acids or 14.25 uh, alpha acid units. And then lastly, we added uh, two ounces of that same Cascade hop uh, um, lot. That's uh, 57 grams at uh, 20 minutes to go on the boil. Again, 6.1 alpha acids for a alpha acid unit number of 12.2. For water and yeast, it was just filtered tap water. Maybe with like some Captain tablet in there. I hope so. For yeast, it was a yeast cake of US05. I had done a five gallon versus one gallon uh, comparison experiment yep. late last year. Yep. All the yeast that was left over from both those batches went into this beer. So I laid it on the, the cake Sounds and then good. took my one gallon uh, fermenter and poured the uh, dregs into it on top of it, which made for a very quick ferment, at least a uh, quick response. All right, extras. So we fermented at two weeks at 65 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or 18 degrees Celsius, secondary for two weeks, and we'll talk about that. Um, so let's go back to the mash. We, I split that because I don't right. have, I just don't have the, the uh, mash ton the size. Capacity. Yes. Yep. So all the, um, 
what I, the, the Great Western Pale Malt, the Stone Path Norris Gold Pale Malt, and the Raw R Pale Malt, that all went in to my big mash tun for an overnight mash. Mm -hmm. So I just... Uh, overnight mash. Overnight mash. Uh, Tremendous. Set the temperature for 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius, and just let it ride We're overnight. talking about, for the people at home, we're talking about a 10-gallon orange beverage cooler. That's right. That's right. And Put the lid on that sucker. And just said, and good night. And did you cover it with a blanket too, or just lit it up and sit it I on the have floor? It, I had it next to that radiator I have in the basement, so. Excellent, okay. Let, let it sit. And then the next morning when I woke up, uh, I took all everything from flake barley, roasted barley, and all the specialty malts, and I put that into my five gallon cooler. Mm -hmm. And uh, mashed that for 90 minutes at uh, the same temperature, 150 Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius. And when you say mash that, well, there's no base malt in there, right? No, okay. just just flake barley. Yep. You okay. know, and so just you let did a great kind of like just let it steep. steep. Yeah, you did a, okay. You know, as much as I could, and then cool. all of that went into my um, my uh, kettle, and then I, I think I did you know just just sparged enough to get to that seven gallon um, boil size from the actual the primary mash. Yes, the primary mash. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's talk about that secondary. So secondary for two weeks on a half pound or uh, 226 grams of Blommer Jet Black Cocoa Powder from our friends at Olive Nation. Olive Nation. Um, the original gravity of this beer was 1.100 and um, it finished at 10. 0, 32 or 1032. 10, 1032. 10, 10, yep. Yep. So that. It's a, is like that, and it's been kind of doing its thing. It probably got into bottles. Oh, that's it's bottle conditioned. Ah, and I used the the, the uh, yeast strain that's just for that. The cask and bottle conditioning yeast from Lal Brew, the CBC dash one. And what was your decision point for using that? Uh, because I think you felt like it needed more yeast. I think that I wanted to make sure that I had enough yeast yeah. to make. Carbonation. So did you use a whole packet or juice? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. So wow. at bottling, wow. put it all in with some priming sugar, mm -hmm. noting well, it's, like... it's um, carbonated. Yep. It's <laughs> great. It came carbonated out carbonated. Like it's not over carbonated either. That's good. So that's what we got. I haven't tasted it, so hopefully it's all right. <laughs> all right. Yeah, he hasn't tasted it. Yes, I, I'll give some notes here. Um, when it was first poured out, there was, um, before I even got up to my nose, there was definitely a... Um, have you ever had a chocolate graham cracker? So I think there was like definitely a crackery um, aroma coming off of it with some hints of chocolate. And then once I really pick it up and smell it, there is definitely a pronounced chocolate character to it. Um, and some toast in there too. It's actually interesting and it makes sense based on the grain bill. It's not overly roasty on the aroma. Yeah. There's no, I don't get any um, Maybe I get a little bit of that centennial, but it's not um, no. noticeable. It's buried in there. Yep. Um, but uh, but anyway, the flavor is more the same. Like the first few sips of it, I definitely noticed. I said, "Oh, there is some definite." I was curious when before you started doing the recipe, like what kind, if any, like the, some of that chalk. What's what's the roasted malt bill like in this? Because there's definitely a for me. There's like a milk chocolate character here, specifically that more mild cocoa type flavor but it's pleasant it's almost like uh the type of cocoa uh, the type of chocolate flavor you get from hot cocoa mm. as opposed to like <laughs> you know like a dark chocolate sure. bar or something or baking chocolate something like that it's, it's really is that nice mild processed dutch cocoa type of aroma and flavor profile there's also a nice supportive amount of um i think there's like a sweetness there that is a little bit um i think the, there's a caramel note to it that's mingling in with the cocoa really well um, and making it all work and come together. Overall, it's not overly viscous for as big as it is. The ferment is good without all that yeast cake. It's pretty good. Hmm. Um, like it's not as super thick. It's not as thick as I would expect a, a stout that big to be. Um, somewhere in the fermentation care, there is something that I'm trying to decide if it's the hot profile or if there's something a little bit um, uh, 
zingy about like some it's not really hot i'm just trying i'm trying to decide if there's like a a little bit of a of a of a of a warmer alcohol in there versus is that i'm just tasting something from the hops uh too at the same time um in there too as i've been shaking it while you're reading the recipe and stuff like that i think i've volatilized a lot of that off aroma wise mm. that uh potential volatile ethanol uh, you know higher alcohol thing um but there might be something of it lingering on the palate but it's not um overpowering and it fits in with a beer that's this, that's this big yep so mm. i was i was seeing um i just did a quick calculation yeah. so the uh, apparent alcohol by volume according to uh, Brewer's friend, is 8.93%. Yep. And that's about right. I didn't think yeah. it was going to be a little over 10 or anything yeah, like yeah. that based on how it finished. Um, I did note that I wrote on the bottle cap SB mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, and then like put the, the year 2020. I think that stands for specialty beer. Okay. Because I think that like, even though I had the note of Imperial Stout, I don't think it's roasty enough yeah, I think like yeah, yeah. if I were to do this again, I would definitely double down on getting at least a, a pound and a half to close to two pounds yeah. of the uh, roasted barley in there. Putting it in a specialty beer category, right? I would sell this to our friends as being, here's my uh, imperial uh, nut brown ale. <laughs> I mean, I think it really hits that note. Yeah, it's 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 almost too strong for like. A nut brown, but if you're gonna say it's imperial nut brown, then you, basically all all bets are off as to what that really needs to be. Um, you're right; there isn't enough like of a of a, a stronger roasted punch. I, there's there's like no like a coffee flavor in there whatsoever, no. and there's no um, real dark uh, flavor. But the funny thing is, you've got enough dark malt in there that it's really struck the color the right way. Yep. I mean, it is it is the a, a great. Um, like holding it down here, I can see the light. It's it is a very very dark brown. Yep. It is not black. I don't know if I can get that effectively over here, but um, you know maybe you can get some of that in the swirling. But it's it's a very dark brown. It's actually you know there's some um, ruby type hi highlights in there. It's it's very nice. It's a nice looking beer. And yep. the carbonation level is pretty good too. Yeah, it's um, not as uh, spritzy, but uh, it's certainly not flat. Yep. So that's good. Mm. And I wonder if um, I wonder if the fat in the cocoa powder also is uh, keeping that um, down a little bit. That or? could be some of that that strange could be mouthfeely part of it that I'm getting, yeah. especially as it warms up. I think that maybe that. Whatever that cocoa fat might be a little bit playing with the <laughs> right. with the with the mouthfeel. Yeah. So big beers. Uh, it's always fun to clean out your refrigerator. Um, but if big you beers. are going to do that, make sure that you have proper <laughs> levels of certain ingredients if you're looking for a specific style. Certainly, that's what I've learned uh, with that. I'm like, nah, yep. I just have a half pound of roasted barley. My thought was that I was going to add this super. Jet black cocoa powder. I think that's where a lot of the color is coming from too, like mm. like that dark brown mm. stuff. Mm. Um, but it, it doesn't replace the roastiness. That's the, that's the thing. So now you have kind of this uh, winter warmer. How do you think the? It's not the the alcohol is not like super. It's like it's kind of like just more of like a dessert beer. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Know? This would pair well with like chocolate cake or yeah. you know things like that i mean it, actually this would probably go really well with like creme brulee yeah. something like that you know um there's that little bit of that toffee notes back and forth and then the whatever like fat pickup there is here from the cocoa powder would really go well with certain desserts i mean it would work really well you know so. and in this serving size too you could crack open a 22 ounce bottle and you could probably pour you know four of those out and you know yep to accompany uh, dessert or something, yeah. You mean you're not we're not going to pound these in the middle of summer? <laughs> Maybe you know how I like my stouts in the summertime. You know what I mean. Three but what I love about this though is um, I think that this is a great way to use up ingredients and plow stuff in to <laughs> bigger beers. Why yeah. not do it, right? Yeah. I think it works. You know, we've well, this time last year we we talked about that and we've tasted some beers where we've used the kitchen sink and the beers and, and here we are and here we are and so i think 
you know, these are these are fun beers to do, and it's fun to just throw those ingredients together and see what you get. Yep. I'm excited to see how this uh, changes yeah. over time, too. Again, mm -hmm. it only being a year old, I thought this was an appropriate time to open it up and taste it. I think it's great. <laughs> but, like, I think that even, you know, next December or December after that, it'll be... Um, uh, interesting to see how all these flavors either blend together or you know just maybe not yeah. <laughs> or mute <laughs> mute themselves you know so all right well hopefully that uh, you're inspired to clean out your refrigerator um, or at least uh, all the grains you have stored up and you're just like what am I gonna do with this half pound of whatever it is that I I had for this recipe that I, I brewed six months ago well you know if you have enough especially <laughs> Like us, if you've brewed a long time, you probably have all these things kind of just sitting around and it's time to use up that flake maze or whatever else you have in the fridge and put it into a big beer like this. Specialty and beer. Specialty beer. You know, spruce it up with some other uh, special ingredients and see what's up. Um, so, awesome. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you like this kind of video, we do this thing every kind, every week, every week, right? It's every like week. we try to get it up on Wednesdays. <laughs> we try to post something on Wednesdays. And we also, um, you know, sometimes that becomes Thursdays too. But anyway, once a week, check us out. Uh, for John and Mike, BrewDashDews.com, Brew On. Cheers.